Uh, Ambassador Prakash, I I'll ask you this, that same question. I mean, I'm sure North South Corridor uh, germinated when you were in active service. We still haven't seen that uh, come through to fruition. And I think the need for the North South Corridor has, has been accentuated given what's happened between Russia and Ukraine, uh, given what's happened in Afghanistan, and of course, the frosty ties between India and Pakistan. All the more reason why we should be engaging with the Central Asian republics. But engagement can't be a, a, a means and an end in itself. I mean, it has to translate into real action on the ground. Yes, it is a process and it should uh, have an objective. It, it should translate into something meaningful full on ground. You know, Zaka, it's not going to happen tomorrow. Let us be realistic. We were one of the first countries to establish a diplomatic presence in the Central Asian countries after the breakup of Soviet Union. Prime Minister Narasimha Rao visited these countries in 93 and 95, and then we dropped the ball. Uh, you know, that area has been taken up with, by China. China's uh, footprint has become very strong, economic footprint and so on. Russia's footprint is already there. But yes, we have historical linkages with Central Asia. We would like to in boost the relationship. But connectivity is a big problem. And the, the North-South corridor is not going to get operational tomorrow. It is something that we'll have to work on patiently. So long as uh, uh, Iran's relationships uh, are trained with the West, particularly with the US, there are going to be constraints. Then there is the Taliban. Then there is a friendly country called Pakistan. So there are, this is a difficult terrain. It is, there are obstacles. But the name of the game is to, to be patient and to look at possibilities, to explore, to press ahead. Uh, when will it happen? I do not know. But when it happens, okay. it will be useful. You know, I like the way you put it, a friend, friendly country called Pakistan. I don't think the sarcasm was lost on anyone. But uh, General Prasad, let, let me ask you, ask you about that. Because, uh, you know, even, even domestically, does it make sense to engage with Shahbaz Sharif? Uh, Imran Khan there seems to be breathing fire. Uh, he seems to be threatening this, this current Pakistani government virtually every single day. We don't know the flux about who the next army chief is going to be. Will General Bajwa get another extension? Will there be a new army chief? Uh, does it even make sense, pragmatic sense, to engage with uh, Shahbaz Sharif? Again, there's great uncertainty about his brother, Nawaz Sharif, returning to Pakistan. Zaka, please let us understand, I'm not talking about the summit between two leaders. I'm not talking about a summit between the President of China or the Prime Minister of Pakistan. It's a meeting of these heads of state, and if you shake hand and just have a pull-in, it makes no difference. I'm not suggesting a, a formal meeting with, with an agenda. The issue today is this. India is no longer a weak country. India is an economically strong country. India's position in the Committee of Nations is much higher today than ever it was before. Our foreign policy is being quoted as an example by the large number of countries saying, National entrance comes first. We will go wherever we need to go. If we need to go to the west, we'll go to the west. If we need to go to the east, we go to the east. And we will do what exactly we want. Therefore, this, this position of superiority, this position of power cannot be let go like this. Yes, there is going to be a, a more structured meeting perhaps with the Russian president, yeah. but certainly not a structured meeting with the Chinese or the Pakistanis. Yet, we have to project ourselves as a country which is economically strong, which means something great for China. They must see the light and come for a summit later. Unless we talk, unless we... Please, please don't uh, understand the saying, I'm, uh, let's make Japhi Maro to the uh, uh, Chinese Prime Minister, President, and to the Prime Minister. No, we cannot. Because unless uh, Pakistan amends his ways, in any case, Pakistan is in total shimozal today. The, this is the worst situation Pakistan has ever faced in their uh, yeah. recent history. The, the natural calamities, the economic situation, the joblessness, the political uh, commotion there, the military in a, in, in a crossroad. Pakistan is in a very horrible situation. But that doesn't mean that we cannot shake hand at a meeting like this. To So we are so much superior. We are so much stronger. We are a we are a 7.7 percent GDP economy, perhaps the fifth largest economy in the world today. And yeah. the Chinese economy cannot survive without the Indian help. And look at the geostrategic, uh, geographical location of India. Without us, the Quad cannot work. Without the Indian Ocean's uh, uh, dominance of ours, the Chinese cannot work. Therefore, with our economic position, with our geostrategic geographical position, we are a very strong nation today. Okay, I, I want to ask GVL like that. The fact nation. that India today is the fifth largest economy and perhaps by the end of this decade could become the third largest economy, uh, obviously that economic heft is what is driving India's strategic importance <clears> as well. 
in the Committee of Nations. Also, the fact that India is going to be holding the presidency of G20 uh, starting this year, and of course, the summit will happen uh, next year in uh, in India. Uh, how much of that uh, is driving this whole uh, process of Indian diplomacy forward, if you will, uh, that India's heft is increasing on the world stage because of its economic power, and then therefore, uh, and as a consequence of that, perhaps uh, its strategic importance. I would consider that as one of the factors, Jaka, and not as the as the only factor or the prime factor. I would say, uh, certainly, our economic, uh, our fast, uh, faster economic, rapid economic growth and the opportunities that it presents to the world is certainly an important factor. But India, being a, a very successful democracy, is a very important factor in in my assessment. Third, a very popular leader and a very stable government. Uh, I think la last eight years, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has has had a, a, a not only a very strong uh, popular support within India, but he has also established himself as a as, as, as truly a world leader. We have seen <clears throat> how a number of surveys year after year show him as the most popular leader in the world, and certainly I think these have increased the India's heft much more than India being a large economy. Uh, um, right. That certainly has helped, but that's one of the factors. And India certainly today gains respect of the world, being a democracy and uh, presenting itself as uh, uh, in a leadership role, both in terms of uh, uh, maintaining world peace, fighting uh, terror, fighting corruption, fighting black money. I think on all these fronts, India has presented a very strong face. And that is what has contributed to India's uh, emergence as, as a major voice in the world and not just the size of the economy. All right, I'll, I'll give the final word to Ambassador Vishnu Prakash. Uh, the one takeaway that you expect uh, from Samarkand, from this SEO summit, what would that be? I think India will walk back uh, with the stature enhanced. Uh, you know, the best part is that India will has always played a constructive role and we would uh you know as i said we will bring about moderation we will try to introduce a, a more uh, sense of purpose uh, you know there are today lots of contradictions within su as it expands it was a china centric organization which was focusing on central asia today it is in becoming it is going to be it is enlarging so that is also one of the issue short point is that the involvement of India, the role of India will get strengthened and get recognized. Right. We'll, uh, we'll come back holding our head high with greater respect and uh, stature. All right. Um, Ambassador Vishnu Prakash, uh, Jivil Narsimharao, General Prasad, thank you very much for uh, joining us. We expect an action-packed uh, two days in Samarkand. The Prime Minister has landed. We're expecting pictures uh, of his arrival there as well in the next few minutes. Uh, but